just ask five minutes to rise and stand. Gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, last Friday, the FCC held the last of six public hearings about proposed changes to media ownership rules. It did so in Seattle after I called for that meeting so that people in the state of Washington could let their government know what they thought. It was really an unbelievable showing at this hearing. Uh, the FCC callously only gave them five days' notice, but still it's estimated a 1,000 people showed up on a Friday night for a nine-hour hearing that ended up at 1 a.m. on Saturday morning. You know, most Friday nights, Americans won't be going out to hearings. But in Puget Sound country and indeed across the country, people understand how important a media consolidation could be as a threat to our diversity and our democracy, and a 1,000 people showed up to testify. I encourage my constituents to attend, and I want to reclaim, rec or excuse me, to credit reclaim the media. The Free Press and the Seattle Times who also got the word out about this important hearing. At the hearing, uh, FCC Commissioner Jonathan Adelstein, Jonathan Adelstein prophetically stated that if the FCC quickly proposed a new, a new rule, quote, you know your input was dismissed, close quote. He was right, unfortunately. Despite, despite the protestations of almost every single witness, in Seattle Friday, displaying the overwhelming sentiment against this consolidation. On Tuesday, two, one business day later, Chairman Martin announced his plans to end 32-year-old ban on radio and television broadcasters owning newspapers in the nation's largest media markets, including right in Seattle, where a 1,000 people asked him not to do so. The fact that Mr. Martin had an op-ed piece published in Tuesday's New York Times just a couple days later shows this was clearly a preordained decision, and that appearance in Seattle was just a stunt, and frankly an insulting one to the citizens who intended, attended. He went through the motions, but Seattle people did not. Now, those people knew that weakening ownership rules would allow the media landscape to be dominated by a few massive corporations, putting too much control in a few hands and producing a system where only the powerful can be heard in our democracy. It would lead to a lack of diversity of voices, programming that is out of touch with local concerns, as well as a continuation of the homogenization of our news and our entertainment. Already, consolidation has brought us to the point where in the average radio market, two companies control 70% of market revenue. That's why the Senate voted to overturn the first try, the first run that Mr. Martin and then Chairman Powell took in 2003 to loosen these rules. It's why a federal court tossed out the ill-advised rules in the Prometheus decision. And it's why we need to stop a second attempt to do the same thing that 1,000 people in Seattle asked to be stopped. Uh, therefore, I'm working with my colleague, Congressman Maurice Hinchy, to reintroduce our legislation that would derail uh, Commissioner Martin's cross-ownership scheme that is so contrary to the wishes of the public. Mr. Martin claims that his proposal is a modest one. In fact, it would impact half of Americans who live in the top 20 media markets and could impact even more if with possible waivers and exemptions. I wish a 1,000 voices in Seattle and thousands more in hearings across the nations would have knocked some sense into a particular commission or maybe three of them on the FCC, who are heck-bent or perhaps hell-bent on loosening media consolidation rules. Now that this federal agency has disclosed its real plan to move ahead with a plan that runs so counter to public sentiment and the public interest. The time has come for Congress to weigh in. We're one voice that the FCC can't tune out. It's time for Congress to act. Let's make sure the will of the American people is heard, not just this preordained stunt by an FCC commissioner. Yield back.